In this video, I'll be going over the newly improved tabs functionality in the latest version of Lightburn. Now some of this may seem familiar if you've seen our previous video on the topic, but we've taken some feedback from our users and used that to improve the overall workflow of tabs within Lightburn. Now let's say for example you've got this dinosaur puzzle. You would like to cut out each of these individual components for the puzzle, but then also cut out this rectangle that surrounds them and have them stay connected to that overall sheet of material without falling out so that the end user can pop them out when they need to use them. The way that you can do that is with tabs. So tab is just any section of a cut where it skips cutting for a very brief distance that's just enough to keep it connected. In order to use tabs, you may need to go to settings and uncheck beginner mode at the top here, click OK, and now you'll see there is now an add tabs option over on the toolbar. So if we click on that, as you can see as I hover over any shape here, it shows the Add Tabs cursor. One thing to note, if I go down to the T-Rex text, it shows a warning cursor. It's because tabs only work when you're in line mode, not fill, fill plus line, or offset fill. Just make sure that you're in line mode before you go to add your tabs. You can also select shapes that you want to add tabs to with a box selection just like you would normally. And once you've done that, you can simply click where you want to add a tab. As you can see, there's this red circle that shows up and while in tabs mode, that will show and it denotes that there will be a tab place there. Now, what does that look like in practice? Easy enough to check with a preview. So we go into preview, zoom in, and as you can see, there's this tiny little, and in this particular case, it's 0.5 millimeter section that is skipped while it's cutting and that will keep it connected to the rest of the material. Now, how large this tab size needs to be, and I'll go over where you can change that in a moment, how large this needs to be depends upon the thickness of your material and the type of material that you're using. You want it to be just big enough to keep the pieces connected, but not so much that you can't break them out without also damaging the part. Now you can also click to add a tab and immediately move it. As you can see, it's blue, which denotes that it's being moved. I can even move it to other shapes. You can click on a tab that already exists and move it if you wanna tweak where it is. And finally, you can delete it by double clicking or shift clicking on those tabs. Now, adding all of these tabs manually would be a royal pain, but that's okay, we've got you covered there. So instead, I'm gonna double click on the cut setting over here as you can see, there's this tabs bridges section. And I'll go over what this checkbox is in a second, that's new. But as you can see, we're on manual tabs. Here's that 0.5 millimeter tab size that I mentioned previously. And instead of manual, I'm gonna to go to automatic. And now you can see all these tabs have been added. And right now it's on even spacing, so it's 50 millimeter spacing. I'm gonna change it to, let's say 100 millimeters. And the way that this works is it looks for the smallest contiguous section of a path in any overall shape and then it walks that path and every in this case 100 millimeters it will add a tab there and another thing to note is that these are all green which denotes that they are automatic tabs if they're red they're manual i can also do tabs per shape which is sometimes more useful it defaults to one but i think three should work for this pretty well. So that's just enough to keep these pieces in, not so much that they're gonna fall out and not so much that you may damage it trying to get it out with all those tabs. But one thing to note here is, let's say on this skull section, I actually don't care about having tabs on these middle sections here, and I wanna skip those. There's a couple of ways to handle those. I'm gonna show you the easiest first, and that is the skip inner tabs function. So if I click on this, well, Okay, that's not exactly what you're expecting, but I did this to make a point. So I'm gonna uncheck this, click OK to keep that on there. So you can see all the tabs have stayed. I've still got those tabs on the inside there. And the reason why all of the tabs in the middle disappeared is because all of these shapes right now, because they're on the same cut layer as this rectangle that surrounds them, all of these shapes are considered inner shapes. Basically, any shape that is completely contained by another shape on the same cut layer counts as an inner shape and will then be skipped. So the solution to that is to simply select this overall outer rectangle, move it to a different layer, and now if I go back into the cut settings 
I'm still on automatic and I can go to skip inner shapes. And now you can see those have disappeared from these in here. Now I can also I'll click okay on this. I've still got tabs on all of these. I'm going to bring this back with the tabs tool. And another way that you can modify them once they've been automatically placed is I can go in here and let's say on this tooth, I'm worried about that potentially breaking off the tooth when this piece is popped out of the overall material. And I'd really rather it be over here. I can just click and drag and move it. And now you can see these have all changed to red. That denotes, as I noted before, these are now manual tabs. You can only have manual or automatic on any given cut layer, but not both. So it automatically changes those. And you can even see that noted here. If I go back in, it's switched back to manual. Tab size has stayed the same. And I can, if I want to, switch it back to automatic, but no, I will lose that manual placement if I switch back to here. And it's going to warn me saying, hey, you've already got manual tabs and switching to automatic will remove them. So it will check that for you so that you don't lose your manually placed tabs. So I'm gonna say no, because I, I wanna leave these as it is. Another thing to note, and this is coming back to this checkbox here, is I can now uncheck that, click okay. So now you can see there's no tabs on this. There's, if I go to the preview here, there's no tab where I had one place there. But the beauty of this is that none of those manual tab placements are lost before you had to just simply clear the tabs out, but they're still all there. And that then brings me to clear tabs. If I do want to truly get rid of all of them, instead of just hiding them and making them not be output, I can also click on clear tabs it will warn me, I can click yes, and now they're completely gone, regardless of what this setting is. So one last thing that I'm gonna show you is the new tab cut power functionality. So let's say I'm gonna go back here, and I'm gonna add just a single tab. This is just for an example, and then go into the cut settings. And there's this tab cut power section at the bottom, which I didn't previously mention. So I can set this to, for example, 50%, and note that it is 50% of the max power. This will make a little bit more sense once I show you the preview. Max power here is 20%. I'm gonna click okay. And then if I go into the preview and zoom in on this, you will see that this is the tab, but it's now being pulsed across. The reason why we say it's 50% of the max is that this is actually cutting at the same power level across the entire thing. But note, this tab is still only 0.5 millimeters wide, but we're very rapidly pulsing the laser across that distance, which the reason for that is that not all controllers handle varying power in the same way, but this was a way that we could implement it such that it works similarly on all machines, regardless of what controller type that you have. And this very rapid pulsing will approximate a varying power level relatively well. Now, as you can see here, I had it set to 50%, and basically about 50% of the overall distance of this tab width is has these little pulses. If I go back though, and change that to, for example, 10%, go back to the preview, and zoom back in on this, you can see now those pulses are much, much smaller. But even though this is not actually varying the power, this will further decrease the structural stability of that tab, allowing you to break it off a little bit easier if you need to. This can be very helpful, especially for thicker materials, where you want to partly cut through that tab, but not all the way, but th this way it will stay connected better without having to do many smaller tabs across the entire shape. So that's all for now with the new tabs. We hope that you enjoy these new features. Thanks for using Lightburn.